Chief? That's an interesting thought. Can we back up? That's an interesting thought. I never thought of that one. Um, I think personally, just came up in my phone. I'm wondering if he's uh, might be, might get uh, hooked up with um, um, the group that is festering with Edge right now. If he's going to get involved in that storyline and stay away from the bloodline right now. I th go ahead. No, go ahead. Because I think Edge, uh, need, Edge needs a, uh, a big body besides uh, Ray. And we already know that Ray can whip Dominic's ass, so that one's not going <laughs> to work. I, I think she would have a little bit harder time with uh, uh, Sola. Although... What I read uh, unofficially in one of the uh, backstreet dirt sheets says that uh, it hasn't been announced yet, but it looks like it will probably be Edge and the Mysterios against uh, Rhea and uh, her two friends in a uh, match at Clash at the Castle. Uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. Well, yeah, I couldn't think of her names. So. After what we saw this past, that's okay. After what we saw this past week, though, when Edge wrestled Damian, right? Uh, they were getting ready to do a concerto, and some WWE female Hall of Famer jumped in the ring, Miss Beth Phoenix. So I have a funny feeling, and, and I think what you're saying could happen, whether it's a clash or not. Yeah. But I also see a mixed tag happening, oh, Ray, yeah. and, oh, yeah. Ray and Damian, and and Edge and and Beth, right? There they are, right there. So we have we're watching uh, SmackDown from my, last night here in the favorite, studio. My favorite couple. Um, unfortunately, the beginning of the show was cut off because the football game last night between the Raiders and Patriots went a little long. So uh, our recording jumped in and re towards the end of the Ricochet uh, Corbin match, which I'm sure was okay that we did that. But um, so there's a lot of possibilities. God bless you, Beth and Edge. Rhea and Damian, a six man like you were suggesting, but yes. I think right now yes, aren't sir. they aren't they working on Edge and Ray as a tag team to go against <laughs> Damian and Finn as well? Isn't that why Dominic sort of disappeared for a little bit? What what I read what I read earlier this morning is that um, the talk the talk is or what I read this morning is um, Edge and the Mysterios mm -hmm. against Finn and Damian and Rhea. And that's going to be the start of uh, inter intergender matches. So what you're saying with Beth and uh, Edge going against Rhea and somebody, right. possibly, that'll probably happen yeah. too. So there, that's there's a lot I, of possibilities. That's what I read. Yeah. And, and of course, again, fans, it's a dirt sheet. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. <laughs> exactly. We are unfortunately not in backstage and creative to know for sure. But that's what makes it fun with, with all these not, possibilities. Not yet. Not yet. We're getting there. We're getting there. But with all the, that, what's great is, is that there's a lot of possibilities now with the six individuals involved, you know, Edge, the Mysterios, and the Judgment. Um, now throw in Beth Phoenix, you have a lot of bodies there that can work in a way to create really any storyline that you want to. You know, I heard, a, I heard an interesting comment on our other favorite show this morning. Yes. Episode 7 <laughs> zillion. Um, in, in Triple H's first 30 days of running, basically running the back, mm -hmm. and it coming from as, as it was put from under the door to where it's at now mm -hmm. in 30 days. How do you fellas feel that he's done in these first 30 days? And, f and fans, I'd like to hear, you know, you guys chime in too on Twitter or whatever. Or call us. God or, forbid or you should try call. to dial your phone. <laughs> give us a call. Uh, but I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are on the first 30 days of uh, what, he's, um, what he's done. Ronald chairs in the chat room. He saw that it was going to be Edge, Beth, and Ray 
versus Judgment Day at Clash at the Castle. So they're, again, hey, I'm all right who knows? With that yeah, too. I'm all right with Hell that yeah. too. Uh, I'll, I'll address that first. I mean, I think in the first 30 days, something that we have to be careful of is will the new car smell eventually wear off on what he's been doing? No. Um, I, I think it's been great. A lot of excitement's going on around WWE with the returns is making it exciting. But look at everybody he's bringing back f- to the show. Where are they all originally from? NXT. NXT. Okay. Wonder why. Yeah, so, so I think that's a good thing because all of these great people that were in NXT that never really had a real shot up on the main roster, now he's giving it to them. In addition to that, one name that we talked about last week was Bronson Reed or Jonah. That, that's somebody we thought last week should come back, and guess what? According to reports, they're trying to get him out of New Japan to have him come back. So that, that would be enough. You were just talking about big bodies and stuff before. There's a, there's a big fella that we actually saw live in Impact last yeah. year that can hold, hold his own. I think it's doing very well because really for the first time in a long-ass time, WWE is being spoken about in a positive way. Oh, yeah, definitely. I used to skip through Raw in like <laughs> hour 15 minutes, hour 30 minutes tops. Now I don't even fast forward it much. It's like you don't even realize it's three hours like the last couple of weeks. It's been real good. Well, as I said to a friend of ours uh, a couple of weeks ago, SmackDown's worth watching again. Absolutely. And I think part of that is two hours. I think we've, we've discussed this to the cows come home, that one huge advantage SmackDown has, it's only a two-hour show versus the three. And I don't know if, if Triple H or the company is thinking about maybe cutting Raw back to two hours at some point, but he's handling that third hour now in a way that makes people want to watch the third hour instead of tuning out. Because look at what they did last week with Ziggler's match. He wasn't the main event, but they treated it like it was. They started it before the third hour started, yeah. and they carried it into the third hour so that it hooked people in to stay involved. Well, you, and you take notice that a lot of the backstage stuff that's going on now, that's pulling people in. Sure. You know, stuff, you go to, you know, you go through the door, you get to the arena. As soon as you get backstage, you're working. Right. I'm glad to see those type of storylines developing again because they were sorely missed. Absolutely. And morale, reportedly, over the last 30 days has been so high. Everybody's happy. They're not walking on eggshells. I heard Buffet's pretty damn good, good now. It's gone. So, yeah. <laughs> Kane's Chicken is there now. Jersey Mike's Fire, you know, Firehouse Subs. Who knows? All right, let's go one last topic <laughs> in rumors before we go to our first break. Rumor is Triple H is in the process of redesigning some of the belts. Which belts do you want to see redesigned? That's a great question. Ronald is, is excited to watch WWE again. Um, which belts do you guys want to see? The WWE and Universal Championships got to go. Okay. I hate them goddamn. The, the big w- W's? W- w- it's just the logo. I want to see oh. like a belt with like the eagle gold. Like okay. I want a belt to look like a damn championship belt, not just, hey, here's our logo. <laughs> Branding. That's I, I, I know it's you. branding and yeah. all, but no, no, I heard you saying championship belt needs to look like a championship belt. Chief, that means it, that means then the ladies' belt should change too. Yeah, all four. I'm fine with me. Change them all, <laughs> except for the United States title. I think it looks cool. I, I agree with exactly what Matt just said. Change them all. How about the IC belt? Change them that all. recently got changed. Change them all. Bring back Ch- the old school one. Change them all. To what? What do you want to see them change to? What would you want to see on the heavyweight on the on the heavyweight belts? Let's let's just go there. To me, there's okay. <clears throat> Bring back the winged eagle. That's one thought. But those were specific to those errors, though, wasn't to me, it? To me, here's here's what I'm thinking. Okay. Good morning and, out there in Twitter land. Sorry. And and I no, that's fine. And I wish we could do it. One of them's going to uh, one of them's going to get defended tonight at NWA. Okay, that to me is. An iconic belt. I wish WWE had it. Unfortunately, they don't. The other one is uh, the big gold belt that Rick used to wear. I think, to me, those are two of the best-looking championship belts that have ever been. If you could design something off of them to give to the fans in WWE, Triple H, I think you got a winner then. But, I, you know, I mean... The, the uh, women's tag team belts that are being developed, mm-hmm. I think they look good. Should the men's tag belts be changed? Absolutely. Because they just have that, like, that gladiator look no. to them on the plate. They, those need uh, to change. 
No, cha change them all. I, I agree with Matt, except, except the U U.S. belt. I agree. I agree. Because that I one like just that also one. recently changed. Yeah. That thing's pretty new. That's like the newest belt they have. Yeah, exactly. Because no, Well, no, I think the IC belt changed after you, that. You know what uh, belt I like, too? What's that? That, that was designed after, sort of after the NWA belt is the NXT championship belt. That's a good one, too. Okay. Yeah, the big NXT that's, across that's, the belt. That's a good-looking belt. They can take all the colors off of them now. But. <laughs> all right. We'd love to know your thoughts on belts. You can put it in the chat room, use Twitter. Call us. Test your phones. We want to make sure your phones work. Give us a call, 702-329-6947. Press the number one. More with us on Thoughts Count Anywhere right after this. This is the story of one man's incredible journey from 350 to 200-pound weight loss and his mission to help and inspire others. Aaron Phillips. People are praising Aaron's new book with five-star reviews. Aaron's various humorous and wildly entertaining stories portray his rise as a sports announcer, his encounters with exotic and irregular entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip through his long-running Vegas Unwrapped radio show, and his contagious and positive style of pursuing success. Call now or visit our website or Amazon now to get your copy of Let My Voice Speak to You, stories from a Hall of Fame radio personality. Order now. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit you hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over, listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! This is John Cena. I just, I, just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast. Thoughts Count Anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count anywhere? I just, is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere because they do. All right, welcome back. Thoughts count anywhere. We are rocking and rolling here. We got a lot to go on to now. My goodness, why is it the WWE report is like five times bigger than anybody else's? Because, I don't know, they've been around longer, I guess, right? There's more stories this week. That's true. Uh, anyway, I, got a, I wrote a question down okay. during break. Yes, you did. How do you think the WWE feels being that they lost Claudio Castanoli? I think that the wheels just keep going. They were, Triple H is probably trying to get back the people he can, but you got to cut your losses with the people that sign like your contracts. You know, and even though apparently someone in WWE is trying to fix that too, <laughs> just pissed off people in AEW. Unfortunately, that's a big ass loss. Yeah, I, I can think of bigger, but like who? Get who else? Get, throw a couple of names out there: Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman. Right, but they're but they're free agents. But we haven't seen. The, uh, uh, but they were also fired. No, no. But who who uh, like along along? Good, good point. But but along Chief's question though, Claudio is signed to AW slash ROH. Who did WWE let go that is currently signed with another promotion that they're sorry that they did? That I think that that's Moxley, why. Like, okay, Brian Danielson. Mm -hmm. Those two were. I'm noticing you're not saying punk. No. No, no. Adam I, Cole. I, okay. I, I, I never mind. Um, <laughs> Where's your rent? <laughs> He's got the delayed buzzer. It's okay. So now, the free agents that are still out there, let, let me ask you this question. Bray Wyatt? Who'd you bring back first, Wyatt or Strowman? Wyatt. Okay. Do you even bring back Strowman? No. Okay. That's one uh, no. Yeah. Well. I, w I, would, I would be in a room with a lot of debate on this one. Because it's just interesting, we've still had more talk about Bray Wyatt over the time since he left, where Strowman's name kept being hot immediately after he was let go for a short time, then he got involved with EC3 and that whole promotion. We haven't seen much from him or heard much from him other weird, than this crazy hair that he has going on. Know, let, let, let me uh, 
rethink this. I, I may be Stroman back for the simple fact I'd like to see him wrestle. Um, what's his name from Canada? Brock Lesnar. Okay. Well, he's from Minnesota. Well, wherever. I thought he was <laughs> from Canada. Up north Canada. somewhere. No, he's yeah, from Minnesota. Up, 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 yeah. Oh, he's from Jesse to Bodies. Uh, That's right. Uh, okay. And Bob Backlund and yeah. many others. Minnesota produced a lot of great pro wrestlers. Flair. Man, why you got to wreck it when I say Jesse to Body and then you got to bring Backlund? Up. Well, I'm just referencing who wrestlers who came from Minnesota. About Backlund? I do. I met him in do person. You, I interviewed you, the man. Hey, do you know Ric Flair came from uh, Minnesota too? I did. Okay, just but I, have, I just just but I haven't met Ric Flair yet. I've met Bob Backlund. Yeah. I've interviewed him. He was the first champion I saw. I saw him live. What was that? Anyway. What was I going to say? I have so no idea. Me, oh, about, about bringing Strowman back. Oh, I, thought so, like I saw Bob Backlund at Madison Square Garden. So anyway. Did. It's uh, better than everything today. Did, did, <laughs> did Strowman ever wrestle Lashley? Yes. Okay. Damn. I want to see Strowman That's against still, Omos just to see what would happen. <laughs> you know, Strowman is <laughs> pure curiosity. Strowman and Lashley, that'd be, another, that'd be okay to watch again. I think. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, you, you know. You, uh, Nick says Brock and Braun have wrestled in the past. That's Nick, okay. Nick Burnett. Let, let's, uh, I just thank want, you, Nick. I just want them to be careful that they don't get too much talent back, and then we all know there's going to be people, be people sitting at catering with nothing going on, and then we're back to the same type of story. That's where I fear the new car smell with Triple H could be in danger. It's great they're bringing these people back. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm happy. I saw, yeah, I saw that. It's in the chat room. That was a good comment. I don't know if I want to see the Wyatt family come back. They've been there, done that with him. They have to come back. Listen, people wanted The Fiend. They want The Fiend to come back, in my opinion. No, How wait. can they bring that back without wait, it being wait, part of that? Wait. Okay. The Wyatt family. Minus, of course, Brody. But. Okay. I would much rather see Bray and his brother. Bo, Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas. And the young lady. And make that a faction. Which young lady you, with which you refer? The one that carries the doll around. Oh, your Alexa. Yes. That Alexa Bliss. Really? Yes. That, that girl. <laughs> She's not hubcaps. That's why. That girl. It's a good show <laughs> back girl. in the 60s, by the way. But that would be a hell of a faction. I think Alexa needs to reestablish herself as, a, as a, her own wrestler. This, I think the thing with the doll now... It's cutesy. I think it's There's, a little played out now. I think so. I, 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 I think so. I think someone else who, I don't know, if they're going to reestablish a Wyatt family thing. Um, I don't know who else could fit the bill. How about Braun and Eric Rowan come back with Bray as a Wyatt family? That, uh, Goon on Twitter asks, okay. which one? WWE or AEW? That's a Twitter question. I, I hope they're asking who we prefer, like one over the other, but... We thank you for the question. WWE or AEW as of today? WWE. Chief? WWE. Yep, we're going to go That's for the hat a real track. simple question now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, you know, demographic numbers are starting to show. AEW's demos are not what uh, they used to be. Uh, Samara out on Twitter at Project Sammy says, big girls get BBLs. I'm not sure what that looks like and look like a WWE wrestler. What's BBL? Samara. Brazilian butt lift. Oh, okay. Thank you. How come you know that? How do you know that? Because like a couple <laughs> of the girls at work, half of them. Oh, there you go. Brazilian okay. butt lift. Yes. That? Well, we'll explain that to you later while we're off air. Okay. I have no freaking idea. <laughs> Ron, I anybody, like hubcaps. If anybody wants to explain to Chief what a Brazilian butt lift is, uh, Ronald says in the, in the chat, Alexa said she is working on a new version of herself. Yeah. I think the old version was terrific, and I mean pre-Wyatt family participation, but... Um, I, I have to tell you, the women, are, the women in WWE are really, really, really starting to step it up. Yes. And they've, some, they've had some health, good matches. The tag team tournament, yes. that's shown a lot of what the WWE women can do. So and the finals for that, as long as you talked about it, or who? Dakota Kai and uh, Io, Io Sky. Sky against uh, Raquel Gun Ra Raquel Rodriguez. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Okay, so that's your final. And Aaliyah has the fastest match at all. Three three seconds she won. In her match this week? No. 
couple weeks. Well, she beat oh. Natalia. When oh, she oh. was like the world record holder. Three stars. Gotcha. Oh, when gotcha. When they were doing the Guinness Book. Don't you remember that? I can't remember that. what donut I had an hour and a half ago. What are you worried All about? Right. Now, but do we see a re- two, two names we haven't even brought up yet is, of course, Naomi and Sasha. Do we see them? We've talked about possibilities in you our mind. What? I don't think so. Do we see her them coming back somehow to put a little fly in the ointment of the tag team? I think they come out at Clash Titles? at the Castle and lay out the winners. Okay. And hold their belts up. Okay. And then now you see you with them. I didn't watch SmackDown, so it definitely is Aaliyah and... Raquel against yes. the other two? Yeah. Yep. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Because at first I thought it was heel yeah. versus heel, and I was like, hey, Sasha and no. Naomi are for sure coming out now. Right. Maybe. Okay. Uh, let's see. <coughs> uh, yes. I'm trying to think. The four-way went down, and, and uh, um, Natalie and... and uh, your favorite, uh, Sonia, won won the four way, <coughs> and then they went up against Raquel and Ali, and Raquel and Ali beat them. Oh, okay. So uh, later on in the show, so it was good. Yep. It All was right. Good. It was good. Let's get into one or two things before. Are you ready for rant, I, I, sir? No, uh, yeah, so I'm going to yeah. stall. We'll talk one or two more topics, and I, then I'll give you time no, to stall. I, I got, I got something. You right. got a rant ready? Yeah, I got something. Mr. Hand. Producer, are we ready to introduce the rant? I All got, right. I got some. Yeah, two weeks to prepare. No, That's no, true. No, no, well, no. I, took his, I, I took his place last week, by the way. This he was doing the rant. You got a lot to live up to for that one. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't even hear it. I must have been sleepy. I'm sorry. Well, that's right. You have to go back and watch. He was it. running somewhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, it's time now for. Running somewhere or from somewhere. The Chiefs rant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good morning, folks. It's the chief. My three minutes of fame is now 258. You know, I want to talk about a, a, a match that I saw Wednesday night on T- TV. TNT. I trade it was on t- TBS. TBS, Channel 7 on my network. Had a, a- T in it. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I want to talk about everybody's favorite wrestler from Chicago, the pipe bomb himself, CM Jabroni. Why do I call him CM Jabroni? If you really watch the match, and we were talking about it earlier. And you took notice. He kicked Moxley with his right foot. But when the match was over, he was favoring his left foot. <clears throat> now, to the average person, just the average person, the chief, the average person, I saw it happen. And everybody's upset. Oh, well, Moxley didn't deserve to win it, this and that. You know what? I call bullshit. There's, there's more to it than meets the eye. It's not the injury, okay? It's not the injury at all. Something else happened backstage that we don't know about. And you know what? Rightly so. We shouldn't know about it. There's too much KFAB out as there is. So you know what? Go back and look at the tape. And for all you people out there that moaned and groaned about CM Punk not, uh, not getting a fair shake or you're upset because the match was only three minutes or Moxley won or whatever, you know what? Get over it. It happened, and that's my rant this week. And your new undisputed AEW champion, John Moxley. That's the chief, over and out. 
So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play devil's advocate with you on one set. You just showed me that meme, which is great, and everything that you guys said. First of all, Lou out I'm there. I'm not answering no questions. No, you don't have to. I'm not Lou on Twitter, to. a young lady sent in. She says she would, Hi, Lou. she would like to know what it would be like to be hit with a steel chair. I don't want to find out. But, I mean, if it's very padded, I guess, and I'm in a hockey suit, maybe. It stings. And, and, <laughs> so I'm going to just say this as, a, as an opposite side to the injury, okay? Go ahead. Has anybody done kickboxing? If you've ever done kickboxing? Yeah. Have you ever, okay, so you roundhouse kicks, right? Yeah. You go up with the right leg. What leg are you on for stability? Your left. Yeah. And if you don't twist right or you can land wrong, your knee can get caught or ankle kick get, can get caught if it's not done properly. Now, uh, good morning, Jennifer. Now, I'm saying Punk has done, what, a million of these in his career. And I'm not saying it wasn't storyline or anything. But just from a, a physical standpoint of doing that, because I, I do kickboxing now once a week as part of my regimen, those roundhouse kicks, man, if your left leg is not in proper position, it could. You could, you could tweak a knee, tweak. You could tweak you an could. ankle. But to the, to the degree of where what you're talking about, with further evidence, his right leg didn't get up to his neck. Like normally those kicks are, right? Got up to the uh, height of his shoulder. So maybe there was something there. Again, I'm just, I'm just simply putting thoughts from another side. I'm in total agreement. It doesn't look good when you kick with one leg <laughs> and you go down with an injury for the other leg. However, there is a small possibility that he might have, based on his leg of standing, may have tweaked to something. But who knows? I don't know. I think they're selling the foot that he injured. So I don't think you can really hurt your foot, like planing your foot. Did, did you, Maybe. It did, all depends. Did you watch the show? Wednesday? I did. I watched the match. Did, did you hear they said that he hurt his same leg as he hurt before? I heard that, and they sounded like idiots. <laughs> no, so I, I get I, I'm going to go back to it. Right. I'm going back to it. They should have done a better job on commentary to sell that, even along the lines if they use what I just said well, as uh, a possibility. I, Who knows? As Time Warner's put out now that they need to control their language, so maybe uh, they'll watch the wrestling match and not cuss so much. There you go. By the way, to that last Twitter message that came up, she that said that's, good, huh? that was good. No, it was very good. She said that Saturday is for boxing. Well, I don't remember the young lady's name. Then why are you watching a pro wrestling talk show? You are Obviously mistaken. Saturdays are for thoughts count anywhere. That's right. And our thoughts do count anywhere. Okay, let's move on to some news in the WWE report. A lot going on. Johnny Gargano made a surprise return Monday night, which he ended up taking out his former partner and friend, Mr. Theory, with a huge super kick. That was so goddamn random. It was cool. But, like... The segment before when, like, the Tommaso Ciampa and all the Dexter Loomis stuff happened. Right. There was the extra guy in the, like, SWAT suit and they grabbed uh, AJ. Right. And in my head, I was like, wouldn't that be some crap if Johnny Gargano came out to help Tommaso? Right. During all this. And it led to really nothing. Right. And then it goes to commercial and then here comes Gargano just randomly. And I was like. This is super cool, sure. but he came back and stood in the in the ring when it was his time to come out and talked about yeah. him, you know, from emotion. Um, theory comes out, try to do all of that. I think it was a great return. I think the crowd. I thought the crowd, as I watched it, or even if I watched the replay, <coughs> I thought they were a little slow in recognizing and responding to Gargano when he was coming out. It was such a surprise. It wasn't in the dirt seats. It wasn't in anywhere. He said he wanted to keep it a hundred percent surprise. And he did. So when the music hit, everyone's like, what the hell? Yeah, it could be. And then once the face popped up, everybody popped like crazy. Absolutely. A couple of comments. Ronald Young says his favorite part of the match with Moxley and Punk was Moxley pinning and saluting the fans with the Jake Roberts salute. And that was the very first thought that I had. I pictured Chief doing that as well. And then our good friend William Hudson down at TRC Top Rope Collectibles every Tuesday at 4.30. Great guys down there selling and offering uh, uh, wrestling memorabilia as well as other memorabilia. He says, theory running around uh, out there looking like Barry Horowitz getting beat silly every week. <laughs> Actually, I have contact with Barry Horowitz. I should try to get him on the show. They do this nonsense to like every Money in the Bank winner. They lose like tons of matches in a row and then all of a sudden they're champion. Well, isn't that the way they do it even on TV building to a big match, right? Yeah. One person is getting beat up like crazy for two, three weeks in a row, and then all of a sudden at the pay-per-view, they win. Hey, yeah. I, I want to throw it out. Yeah. Ciampa and Gargano against the Usos. Book it. DIY versus the Usos? I am 
so down. Book it. Take, uh, take my money. Miss Peacockery on Twitter at yes, Miss Peacockery says, yes, I need indeed. WWE to announce a Raw or SmackDown show in Florida. Well, now with, with, with them all doing these road shows again and everything, it's possible. So you should go on to WWE.com and check <clears> their <throat> schedule for local events. Hey, Ronald or William, do you, is there, is there a uh, WWE show coming down the Florida area? I know you two gentlemen. Yeah, they, they would know. You two gentlemen live down there. Rumor so, uh, has it Google is a hell of a thing. I don't know anything <laughs> about it. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. All right, let's keep going <laughs> here. WWE film next week, SmackDown tonight or last night, as Clash at the Castle would be the next day. Yes. So next week... They would have hate their lives if they would have freaking tried to do a live uh, SmackDown. Well, why wouldn't they have done it from there? Why couldn't, they have gotten, why couldn't they have done a live SmackDown from... Where are they doing the Clash? It's not in Wembley. Where are they doing it? They're in London somewhere, aren't Cardiff. they? Cardiff. Cardiff. Why, why not? Why could they, I, I don't know. Logistically, I don't know, but I'm just asking. Could they not have left here with enough time... Maybe to do a live SmackDown on Friday, then do the pay-per-view maybe, Saturday morning? Maybe there's not enough wrestling Could rings be. over there. Well, they, they probably slept their own rings, don't you think? No. Nope. I'm sure they got everything there, but you don't want to put, like... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank there's, you, Willie. What, what the <laughs> Love you, brother. There's no way you would want to put, like, the Friday of SmackDown, like, at the WrestleMania arena just to, like, get the... Everybody wants to be surprised by like what Casa the Castle is going to look sure. like and be like, oh, let's throw SmackDown in before WrestleMania to see here's the WrestleMania stage before yeah. WrestleMania. Well, that's true. No, no. I, again, I put it out there, but yeah. it's, it's ready to go. But um, if they were to do that in the States, they would have to jump on a plane yeah. to catch an 8 a.m. show. No, and, you're right. You're right. Um, okay. Twitter. Arian. Not, Arian, not Ryan, says WWE. Great Kali. Happy birthday. We actually have him on our list today as well couple of things real quickly that have come in the chat room. I know our producer's putting them up on the screen. Uh, but William says, best thing I've seen Theory do, it's get beat ridiculously by Brock with the briefcase. William Hudson, thank you, William, says, can we also get applause to the fact that Aaron has changed his lifestyle so much that part of his weekly regiment is kickboxing? Nice job. Thank you, sir. He also says, NXT only local WWE show anytime soon. Jennifer, for some reason, continues to pander to Chief. She says, I'm glad... The Chief is back this week, and Ronald says, that was my first thought when I saw Johnny come out. No Raw or SmackDown show anytime locally. So, okay, a lot of, I just love reading their comments because sometimes hey, they all don't get read. Uh, this is a Vegas show. They better come to Vegas. I asked, go, I asked the people, I asked my fans, and they, you know, they tell, tell get it out there right away. There you go. You know? All three of them? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he and Elizabeth, he and Liz are two. That's three more than you guys got. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm Vince look, McMahon's I'm looking at the numbers. Uh, <laughs> me too. Vince McMahon spotted for the first time since leaving WWE, celebrating his birthday with a mystery woman. Going out with John Cena's wife, Pat McAfee, and Brock Lesnar were also spotted at the restaurant. Wasn't Sable with him too? Because I saw a picture this week of Sable with Brock. I don't know if it was the same event or not. But I didn't see Sable, but it was. Kind of weird that, like, he was, like, trying to hide from the cameras. But it was funnier that, like, the girl he was with was, like, biting her purse. I was, like, laughing at myself when I saw that. I wonder, I wonder how much she got paid to go with him for his birthday. Probably, like, $3 million, <laughs> roughly. <laughs> That'll be another payment we'll be talking about soon. <laughs> Jeez. So is it good for – so let me ask you a question. Is it good for Cena, McAfee, and Lesnar – to be seen publicly with Vince like this for their image with all of what is being alleged with McMahon. Yeah, it's not like he's getting charged with crimes or anything. It's just, oh, you're bad, Vince. You have to retire. Okay. Chief, your thoughts on that? I think it's away from the wrestling business, so it's personal life. and. Uh, yeah, but personal <laughs> life like McMahon and all no, this stuff, no, it's not no. personal when it's out there in the public. hey. hey. If it's they, personal when you pay more for sex than you did for WCW. If, if they if they went out and they had dinner and there was a birthday party at a restaurant mm -hmm. for Vince, sure, and that's what the people showed up for. The, uh, you know, granted, the only three that were seen in outside of the venue were Cena, Brock, and Pat. Yeah, because I saw the same picture probably. 
But yeah. Vince did go to dinner with peacemakers, so I'm sure he'll make peace of everything. And <laughs> so you don't be okay. So you don't know who else <laughs> could have been in absolutely the re- in yep. the restaurant sure. that sure. was there. Well, we know one person that wasn't and, Linda, and and <laughs> and I say, and she's probably going to take his ass to the cleaners, yeah. and I don't blame. And her. no mention of Stephanie and Triple H or who cares? Shane. No, I'm just saying as yeah. a family dinner to celebrate his birthday. But then, again, I don't know where. The shows were in conjunction to the dinner, and, and, and no grant, one's around. And but granted, what's going on, we don't know. Yeah. Triple H, they could have, you know, they, the lawyers could have easily told Triple H and Steph and stay Shane, away. stay away. It's not good for business. So, you know, you, got, you have to look at it that way. From Twitter, Richard Jennings, uh, at Richard 960 says, He should not be a champion. And I'm not sure just who exactly Richard's referring to, but he says, bad image for WWE and his two stooges should not be either. I'm 87 years old, been around wrestling most of my life. Wake up, Vince. SmackDown stinks. Not many old timers watch it. Thank you, Richard. God bless you. I think you you forgot to watch SmackDown in the last, like, four weeks. Who's the champ? I wonder what the hell is he talking about? Oh, he's probably talking talking about Theory. I'm I'm guessing maybe Theory is what... Or Roman and... Who's his two Roman, stooges? Roman and Nusos. Well, that's true. Roman and Nusos as the stooge. Well, listen. Roman's going to be celebrating two years as the universal champion. So, right? So, that's, that's pretty darn good. All right, one last piece of thing I want to talk about. <clears throat> then we're going to go to break after this, Mr. Producer. Why? <laughs> uh, because we have, to, we have to get our sponsors to continue to pay us. Uh, Edge beat Damian Priest in the main event on Raw and said, after the cameras went off, that he plans to come back next year and say goodbye. If this is the last year we have Edge on the roster, who do you want to see him face before he hangs him up for good? I want to see him get a last title reign. Okay. I think he deserves it. Heavyweight champ, like against uh, Roman? Or whoever has the belt at that time? Okay. Chief, how about you? I want to see Edge versus Cross. Christian. At both of the... <laughs> Both of those suggestions are quite interesting, Cross and Christian, but Christian's one of those guys, who, now unless the forbidden door can get opened as if, a retirement if, match. If he's, going out, if he's going out on a final match for retirement. Mm-hmm. Especially in Toronto. In my mind, it only makes sense for Christian. I, I, you know what? Thinking about it, and I saw, did you guys see the biography on Edge this past weekend? Yes. Absolutely loved it. I didn't realize how far back he and, and Christian go. And Essence kids. Yeah, and, and I didn't know how. I thought they came up through the system where I didn't realize they grew up together. That's why um, Christian makes sense. So, all right, before I finish that thought, MJF, GOAT, Brian Pillman called you smart works, and this is at Honest Broker, says WWE fans, AEW fans hate me. WWE fans trash on guys like Jungle Boy for not being believable but, but love Miz. I'm not sure Miz can, be, can beat JB, Jungle Boy, in a real fight. Who knows? Neither are trained fighters or past athletes. Miz is not like MGF, who was an all-state linebacker. He came from reality TV. Interesting comment about cross-promotion. Delete your Twitter. (laughs) It's deleted. (laughs) But I I think... Christian makes the most sense. I I agree. With the backstory in Toronto, everything, I agree. If they're in Toronto, then somehow the forbidden door has to be opened and let Christian come in. I would love to get your thoughts on that. Who do you want to see Edge take on in his final match? Probably next year in Toronto for what it sounds like. Love your thoughts. But we'll get back to that right after this. This is the story of one man's incredible journey from 350 to 200 pound weight loss and his mission to help and inspire others. Aaron Phillips. People are praising Aaron's new book with five star reviews. Aaron's various humorous and wildly entertaining stories portray his rise as a sports announcer, his encounters with exotic and irregular entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip through his long-running Vegas Unwrapped radio show, and his contagious and positive style of pursuing success. Call now or visit our website or Amazon now to get your copy of Let My Voice Speak to You, stories from a Hall of Fame radio personality. Order now. Big Chief, I need you to check out the podcast, Thoughts Count Anywhere. 
This is the Essential Character EC3 on behalf of my dear friends at Thoughts Count Anyway, the podcast for your mind when you need deep thinking about all things sports and entertainment. Hello, this is Martin Kastaus, a.k.a. Marty the Mod, and you're watching Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Enjoy! <laughs> this is Impact Wrestling's Dash and Chris Bay, the ultimate finesse former finesse division champion and you're listening to thoughts count anywhere podcast thoughts count anywhere y'all watching this this is my new tag team partner steve-o A.K. zoo from the hit movie friday and from no holds bar hi i'm sean Lavari. listen to thoughts count anywhere for all your wrestling news hey what's going on this is axe and i'm smashing the demo and we want to invite you to watch every saturday morning thoughts count anywhere All righty then, welcome back. Thoughts count anywhere, hour number one, about 10 minutes away from wrapping up. Sir? The chief has a tidbit of information. All right, share the tidbit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Chungo. Somebody brought up about Roman Reigns having almost two years of holding the championship. Just so you know, Roman has held the belt to the present day today, 725 days, okay? Bruno San Martino has held the belt 2,796 days. So Roman, you only got 2,071 days to go to be considered the greatest of all time. That is the chief over and out. Okay, um, moving on. <laughs> does anybody even consider Bruno San Martino the greatest of all time, honestly? I, I'm going to tell you what, when wrestling was wrestling, I'd like to see some of these local yokels today go up against him. Who would you like to see today's, that's a great question, who would you like to see if today's, on any show, who would you like to see go against Bruno in his prime? I'm just curious. For what, a wrestling match? Yeah. Title or not, I don't care. Who would you like to see Bruno the, go against the prime Bruno versus someone from today's wrestling genre? That would be a good match. A as great match. As far as a, a wrestling match. Yeah. Doesn't have to be for a title. Claudio. Okay. That's an interesting one. Brian Danielson. Okay. <coughs> um, Carrion. Um, they didn't have, when, when Bruno wrestled, they had big guys, but they didn't have them sculpted guys like Carrion and some others. They yeah, had, the hell they didn't. Who? T I'm, I'm just asking. Patera. Nice, that's one. <laughs> Matt, give me yours. That's one. <laughs> I'd want to see him against Roman or him against Cena. I could see him against Cena. That would be an interesting match. That'd mix. be a good match. Yeah. That'd be a good and match. I know Stan Martino wouldn't stand a chance against either of them. <laughs> uh, in his prime. Remember, I'm talking uh, about Bruno in his prime. I, I mean, it's just a question. You, you got to remember. I don't think he's going to beat anybody with a headlock and a clothesline. You got, you got to Sorry. Rem you got to remember, though, back then, wrestling was wrestling. It's not... It's not the flippy shit, okay? It Cena was and Reigns don't it do was flippy shit either. These guys today, They're they just don't... They're not boring The as guys well. today don't know how to wrestle on the mat, okay? Some of to, them do. Not many. Not many, okay? But and they also got TV ratings, and nobody wants to see Matt wrestling for three hours. Well... William Hudson in the chat room says Bruno versus AJ Styles. That'd be a good match, too. From Twitter, H-Town Dynasty 1989 at H-Dynasty 1989 says, It's crazy how people making up false reports about AEW, and they think it's cool just because they're a huge fan of WWE and Triple H. Yet nobody wasn't riding with Triple H when he was a COO of WWE, especially when he was, quote-unquote, fucking up big time. All in caps, how soon they forget. I'd like to know what false reports with which you are referring to, but okay. He's entitled to his, his opinion there. There that's, is like a fine. whole weird group in like Twitter land that if you like WWE, you have to hate AEW. Right. And if you like AEW, you have to hate WWE. Yep. Just be a goddamn wrestling fan. And Triple H being Thank COO you. is completely storyline. Everything is run by Vince. Now in reality, everything is run by Triple H. 
So make the, that make sense. And the storylines are getting a lot better. Hell yeah. The wrestling is getting a you, lot better. You know what, though? I, I've, I've got to say this. I think we have two, and I, and I mean this, we have two great wrestling products, not that we've got to choose from, but that we can just watch as wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The comments can come in, and, and, and uh, we're all entitled, you know, nobody forces you to watch WWE. Nobody forces you to watch AEW. Right. Okay. A lot of people forget about New Japan. What's that? I'm just joking. There you go. <laughs> there you go. New Japan. Hey, New Japan's getting ready to put a show on out here next month. That's right. And, and maybe shortly thereafter. And they've got um, my money. Shout out to my buddy Richie up in Minnesota. Richie checking in as always. Richie, just curious if you got the other book in the mail yet because it did go out. Uh, just curious if it landed at the door. Okay. Did you guys see the main event for the New Japan show here? No. It's Homicide, Wheeler, Yuta, and Eddie Kingston versus Jay White and the Good Brothers. Wow. Homicide was on Busted Open this morning. He was in, they interviewed him because for, of his match for tonight. 47 years old. Yeah. At, uh, he's wrestling tonight to defend, still his, go. to defend his title for uh, NWA. What is junior heavyweight? Junior, junior right? heavyweight, yeah. All right. Let's see if we can get this. year old junior champion. Ju that's, yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, he, can still, he can still go, though, man. Oh, Matt Cardona beats him for that, too. I wonder, what his suitcase, <laughs> I wonder what his suitcase must be like with all the belts. How many times he gets stopped in that, the airport? That would be a step down for Cardona, wouldn't it? After I just want to see how butthurt you get when he beats Trevor Murdoch for the belt. It ain't happening. Oh, that's happening. No, hell no. Who the hell wants to see Trevor Murdoch as Who the, the hell NWA wants champion? to see Cardona? No one wanted to see freaking Nobody Matt Murdoch Nobody wanted to see Cardona the first time. Uh, WWE plans on holding more stadium shows worldwide. WWE won't be moving to TV 14 anytime soon, which I think is sort of surprising because they made a big ruckus about it when it was announced, right? Uh, right. Uh, one of the re uh, Reigns just signed a new contract, and I guess his schedule has been reduced officially because he says he's spreading himself too thin, appearing on oh, both shows, okay. then all the pay per views and that, all of that stuff. That makes sense now. Too thin. Okay. He said being in the main <laughs> event scene for literally 10 years and having to do all the house shows, all the appearances. Right. right. All the TVs, all the pay-per-views, having five kids and a wife. I'm recovering still from leukemia. I mean, yeah. he still has that in his and, body. But, is, but, but sorry, let's take leukemia out for a second. Talk to me. Talk I want, to, I want me. to take that out of there. Everything we just talked about, right? Yes, you sir. just said. Okay, not everybody traveled. There aren't as many people that travel to do their job like wrestlers do, whether, yeah. it's, whether it's within the United States or abroad. However, schedule... Who doesn't, who doesn't work at least five days a week, 40 to 50 hours a week? Who doesn't, right? Yeah. Who doesn't have kids? True. I mean, obviously, a lot of people don't, and they're working a crazy schedule. Now, we're also not paid the millions of dollars that he is with merchandise and everything else. I get that. I'm just trying to make things equal. I can say the same thing. My wife can say the same thing. I mean, I need a lighter schedule because I'm working you know, 50, 60 hours a week. I'm on a salary for only 40. I got my kids. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got shows. Blah, blah, blah. Can't we all say that? I mean... I get that as a top performer, you need to keep him fresh. I used to. What's that? I, I used to be able to say that. Yeah. But now that uh, I've got to my pinnacle, right. I'm retired. No, I, so I, I, I've earned where I'm no, at No, I'm not now. saying retired. I'm saying okay. anybody that's still in the workforce. That, I, I, you know, I totally agree yeah, with but, you. Totally. I agree. At least we're in the same city like we're working in, so we can just go 10 minutes home. Well, but that's whatever. why I said, you know, not, not our, us right here, we don't fly hours and hours to go to a job. But there are some people that do have to travel well, I, uh, across the country. I mean, look at, our, look at our, one of our founding fathers of this show. Yeah. He has to travel at times. W WWE last night, they were where? Detroit? Where the hell did the, oh, the show I come from? So. I, I'm not that sure. sounds right. Somewhere up there. Well, i talking to a friend of mine. He was home on Wednesday. Okay. He traveled somewhere Thursday. Then he ended up in Detroit last night. Mm -hmm. So they travel. No, I, I know, agree. But they, I'm saying they, they, the, yeah. the three of us here, went, you, we're, you and I are still working. He's retired. But when you worked, we, we didn't travel on planes. Now, when I worked for a national payroll company years ago, periodically I had to get on a plane and fly back 
East, but that's yeah. periodically. I'll give you I get all the travel and time changes, takes a beating on the body and the mind. I, I get all of that. However, that's their job, isn't let, it? Let me, yeah. let me give you an example. Okay. Let me give you an example. SmackDown was in Detroit, by the way. Thank you. William this, confirmed this, it. This might, help, this might put it in perspective. Okay. One year when Liz and I were living out in San Diego, we had just moved from uh, New Orleans to San Diego. And uh, she had a calendar in the house because she always marked down when I was underway mm -hmm. and everything. And that year, I went through the Panama Canal eight times that in one year. And I was gone 306 days out of the 365-day mm -hmm. calendar year. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it does come with the job. No, absolute, absolutely. Every absolutely job correct. has its benefits absolutely. and and pros and cons, right? Yeah. And if you don't get a folks, that's why they call me the chief. So, uh, <laughs> that's, that's right. why. That's right. All right, let's move on to another topic or two quickly before we go okay. to our top of the hour break. Where are we going? Unification match is set for NXT Worlds Collide. NXT champion will face NXT UK champion Tyler Bate. And NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose will face NXT UK Champion Micah Sotomora, Miko, sorry, and Blair Davenport in a triple threat match. It's cool they're bringing like the UK champions over, but I don't see either of the UK champions winning those matches. Right. You know what? Uh, I want to throw this out there. I wish they would take a half hour of NXT mm -hmm. and devote it to whatever the new name of the NXT show is going to be. NXT or Europe or something? Europe, whatever it's going to be. Because I'll tell you what, I've, I've been very, very impressed with some of the wrestlers that have come over to wrestle already, and I'm looking forward to this when worlds collide. I really am. I think uh, that's going to be a hell of a show. And unfortunately, it's on Peacock. All right, with Peacock. the... <laughs> With that, we're going to step aside. Our number one is in the books. Peacock! In about it's, it's good to be back, folks. What was that lady's name on Twitter? Peacockery? That should be the new one. Peacockery! Mrs. Peacock, wasn't that it? In, in something the, Peacockery. In the, in the game Peacock. Clue? Oh, it's Mrs. Something, Peacock, yeah, something wasn't like that. it? Yeah. You're watching Thoughts Can Anywhere. Our number two coming up right after this. This is the story of one man's incredible journey from 350 to 200 pound weight loss and his mission to help and inspire others. Aaron Phillips. People are praising Aaron's new book with five star reviews. Aaron's various humorous and wildly entertaining stories portray his rise as a sports announcer, his encounters with exotic and irregular entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip through his long running Vegas Unwrapped radio show and his contagious and positive style of pursuing success. Call now or visit our website or Amazon now to get your copy of Let My Voice Speak to You, stories from a Hall of Fame radio personality. Order now. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast ever. Thoughts count anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over and listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! Studios, a unique multi-camera social media virtual content creator's paradise. We offer high-end services using live streaming and film production for your personal or corporate, commercial or event, and campaign needs. Pre-record or live stream to your audience on multiple social media platforms simultaneously. Fun and interactive with social media comments, phone lines, live remotes, audio foley sounds, and Snapchat filters. Be creative, get recognized, and make money. We help you by providing an all-in-house production team. Visit our website at golive.vegas. All right, welcome back to Thoughts Cut Anywhere. Come to live and going with Susan on Las Vegas Nevada, hour number two about to start. I want to hey, save as much That's time. not your internet. <laughs> and and <laughs> listen, fast forward. Listen, listen He's folks. crazy. It was the Chief's fault because I was talking to Aaron about something else. No, no, so no, you're uh, good. I apologize. You're good. 702 329 6947. Press the number one to come into the studio. 855 502 4321. Sean Ryder out on Twitter says that Sean Ryder 27. Ten years ago today, 
WWE Raw took place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right. Someone needs better hobbies in the morning. <laughs> well, no, keep tuning in. Milwaukee. But did something happen 10 years ago in Milwaukee that we're not aware of that makes it important? Twitter's a weird fucking place, I know, but that's bro. okay. But Milwaukee. we appreciate it. We appreciate hey, it. Hey, no, weird. hey, I, lo- I like facts like that. No, thank, absolutely. Thank you, Sean, for sending absolutely. that in. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Real quick, <laughs> let's finish up some of the WWE notes that we have left so we can swing into AEW. Okay. Uh, Wade Barrett re-signs with WWE, I guess, to stay on as commentator down at NXT. I think he does a pretty good job from when I catch it. Uh, Thank you, Richie. (laughs) Good pace to the show today. Thanks, bud. Uh, Wade Barrett re-signs. WWE will hold Royal Rumble before Super Bowl weekend. I I don't have an issue with that. Does anybody? I mean, I don't know why that is part of it. Royal Rumble is one of my favorite shows of the year. So. Wonder yeah. if they're, wonder if they're going to try to put it in the same city as the Super Bowl. Maybe start rolling that way with it, being that there'll be a big crowd in the city for the maybe Super cool, Bowl. Maybe cool because the they'll be drawing from that crowd. Maybe I don't know. There'll be a couple states over because I think the I think. they said the Royal Rumble is going to be in San Antonio, yeah. but the Super Bowl's in Arizona. Okay, right. I wish it. It's a couple hours. Yeah, actually, I don't wish the Royal Rumble was near here this year because I'm already trying to save for WrestleMania and I'll need another fucking show to <laughs> well, go San, to. San Antonio is on, we- on the western part of Texas. Yeah. And so it's not, you know, it's not that far. You, you got New Mexico and then you got, uh, then you got, uh, all right, hold on. There's the well, answer. Sure, no, 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 no. Short Ryder sends us another tidbit. Four years ago today, WWE held a Raw main event super show at the Air Canada Center in Toronto. Ontario, Canada. Three years Thank ago, you, I woke up this morning also. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Pre- Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Keep it coming. We'll, Appreciate we love it. it. Uh, a couple of comments uh, in the <laughs> chat room. Uh, Richie says, great pace to the show today. Jennifer out in Hawaii says, part of what makes this show great are the side stories, and the chief is awesome. Thank you. And William says, Thank you, agreed, Twitter is a weird place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ever want to feel better about yourself? Just go through <laughs> wrestling Twitter. It's hey, you guys, it's weird. You guys, hell. you guys can laugh all you want, <sighs> but guess what? I don't have a Twitter account. I don't laugh, dude. and I'm not. <laughs> no, I that's could, okay. I could care less. Tyson man. Fury likely to be part of Clash at the Castle. Why and where? Tyson Fury. Isn't that He's had like that history with Drew McIntyre, so it might get involved with. I don't think he'll get involved like the main event or anything, but. I don't, I don't want to see Tyson Fury involved with that. I don't give a shit what he did in the past. It's like a Johnny Will <laughs> for me to see a guy like this come in and do this. I, I don't. I, to me, I think whatever time he gets to to screw up any storyline, is it really worth it? I'd rather see Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck trying to upload anything. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Speaking uh, of, ne- he- hell no. What? Hell no. What? Hell no. To what? I can't Tyson, wait till that fucking figure comes Tyson, out. I'm buy him like ten. Tyson Fury. <laughs> only I'll tell you. What, I'll take it only if Knoxville signs it. No, it ain't happening. You know how hard I'm trying to get him on this. show? I know you. We don't. <laughs> I ain't gonna say shit either. I, I was gonna. He's random. Is gonna pop up on the screen just to see the look on Aaron's face. Sorry. Uh, go ahead, Chief. Why? No. Yeah, you're fine, man. Anytime you want to talk about Knoxville, man, you have at it. Don't, I, I enjoy Chief, it. You're looking a little peakage. You might have to leave now. I feel <laughs> fine. Anyway, uh, no, I was. I, you know, I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm uh, uh, ignorant to things, and I didn't know who Tyson Fury was, so I looked him up on my uh, handy dandy thing here. Hell no, I don't want him at the show. He don't deserve to be there. Buy a ticket and watch the damn thing. Okay, you can sit front row and you get two cockies. I'll leave Matt. I'll let you respond. And you get two cocky. Drew McIntyre will knock the shit out of you. There you go, Chief. Over and out. <laughs> Matt, the wasn't floor is yours. Like nineteen, like sorry, it wasn't from like nineteen fifty. He's a goddamn boxing heavyweight champion. I and don't he, care. And he appeared in WWE. And he appeared in WWE like multiple times. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Do you not remember him in the no. movie about, what, a year and a half ago? No. Eh. Who did he go against? I forgot. No. Who, I don't I mean, remember he, either. I just know he was there. Hey, <laughs> yeah, he had a story. Hey, my fan's up there. There you there go. There it is. <laughs> my <laughs> only fan with the WD-40. That's right. I'll give you three cases this week. How many tapes? 
Uh, you haven't seven. worked out this morning. You got seven. three weeks. You got three no, weeks I to got catch up. Bruise, man. I'm not oh, working got, out. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't want the people to. Between see the bruise and the runs, you better stay kind of still. No, I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm good. I got a case of Charmin it back was, here. Just it was to, diarrhea yeah. with the fluid drive. Well, if you listen to Thursday's show, <laughs> the round table, <laughs> our good friend Billy talked about uh, anal leakage. I have no I idea. I a solution for that. <laughs> That's it, man. We'll throw if the you, thoughts count anywhere, logo on one. We'll hook you up. Folks, if you see me <laughs> run out, I'm heading to the Charmin. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Netflix moving forward with see, Vince I McMahon. I can laugh Dockers. at myself, too, <laughs> I you know. bozos. I know. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. I can't see the letters with the tears in my eyes from laughing so hard. Do, uh, you, do you know why? Huh? This is why Jennifer, uh, Jennifer watches us. Hey. Why? Why, why, the, why the hell haven't we talked about the Thrustbusters anymore? Because it's not on the list yeah, yet. Yeah, you know why? why? Because they're not on TV no more, you jabronis. Oh, well, we're going to make a big deal. They ain't even on freaking TV no Who more. Who was making a big deal? We you weren't. guys were. Just the name. Hey, look at that, Just man. the name. Hey, you threw a damn good wheelchair out of the ring. What the hell's wrong with yeah, you Yeah, get guys? that to Nevada Wheelchair Foundation, freaking will you please? Freaking jabronis. Netflix has decided to move forward with the Vince McMahon docu-series. Uh, Paul Heyman hasn't been on SmackDown since SummerSlam as he is still selling the F5 that he took. Isn't, isn't in all seriousness, isn't Paul uh, writing a lot now backstage, I believe? I think he's doing more backstage, yeah. but I think so. just the fact that he's still trying to sell, sell the it. move is kind of cool. Because if yeah. it was an AEW, he would have been up in 15 seconds. <laughs> or that video. Were you the one that sent me the video? Were you the one who sent me the video of the fight between two guys on the street and one of them did a, uh, a pile driver or something and the, yeah. the guy who took it stood right up? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and there was comments on it. It's like, well, that's how you don't sell. That's a no sell for sure. Exactly. Uh, Ronald shares that Fury uh, face Braun Strowman. That, that's, yeah, that's, what, that's so. what it was. All right. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you, I just Ronald. got off a 16-hour shift. Don't judge if me. Will Ospreay <laughs> does anything as expressive as making WWE TV not only watchable, but must see for a calendar year. Maybe I'll give him DAP, but my confer- confirmation bias is too strong for a wannabe gangster in the most pathetic medium to be one in. And that's from Ent- oh. Entendre L. L- Idolo. Idolo. Though, uh, those Mrin. <laughs> Thank you. Not sure. I'm in a mood today. I'm going to start so much shit on Twitter after this show. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett oh my was, God. was fired this pad from his executive role, and almost immediately, Road Dog was rehired. Bianca he stole Be- the song and then stole his job. <laughs> <laughs> Bianca Belair signs with WME Management, presumably for other projects, of course. And Renee Paquette. Spotted in, or- in Orlando working on a WWE project. Any ideas what the project is? I have no idea, but I was kind of surprised. I figured she'd have showed up in AEW by now. Yeah. But Interesting. <laughs> All right. Rumor has it she knows somebody there. <laughs> Maybe. Right? Dear God, don't tell me you look confused to who it might be. <laughs> My buddy, man. I, I got three damn pictures I need to... You know, I've been waiting two years, man. No to, one like Double or Nothing was here. He was literally the only person I never saw. To get my picture signed. I've been waiting three years. Well, what's taking so long? I can't see him. You know, I Isn't got... is usually seen as problem? I got, I, I, I got him signed by, by uh, our mutual friends. But yeah. I can't get the other mutual friend. I, he, you were right. I di- we didn't see him out here. I wonder if like Had him I and Daniel Brian Danielson were like somewhere else because I was around Mandalay Bay a lot that week, and I never saw those two at all. They, Will- William uh, shares honestly, they were up north. William shares uh, a thought in the chat room. Talk I th- to me. I think losing Jared is a mistake. He's so intelligent with professional wrestling and live event sales were finally up. I think, I think live event sales will continue to flourish if the storylines on TV stay as good as they oh, are. Oh, yeah. Definitely. With or without Jared, I, I in my opinion. I don't disagree. I, don't I think dis- Jeff Jared holds a record for being fired the most <laughs> I don't, by I, anybody. I don't disagree with Will on that comment, but... The only thing that I think about is if he's that good at writing and everything, why didn't his own company make it? Right. 
and they had to close their doors. That that's the only thought that came to my head. Let's go to the AEW ROH report. First do, item, we've do already we have to? we've already Hell talked yeah. about this. Okay. Uh, any other comments we need to make about Moxley and Punk in about three minutes? We don't need to. We talked about that earlier, right? What All do you right. think's going to happen with the All Out main event, though? <sighs> Supposedly, he's still moving forward. It's still being advertised as Punk and Moxley. How are you going to justify somebody's breaking his foot and then, like, two weeks later, he's supposed to main event the biggest show of the mm-hmm. year? Mm-hmm. Hey, folks, and, it's, and it's in his hometown. I wanted time, MJF right? to come out so fucking hey, bad. Hey, folks. They might. Folks, let's be honest on something, okay? And, and I really I want to hear your comments. Come across Twitter. Come across extra late. Facebook. <laughs> I, I don't care what you do. But tell me if, if a fella really, really hurt his foot, okay, or his ankle or his leg or whatever, re-injured it, okay, and, and the card's going to be in what, three weeks? It's like two weeks away. Labor, Labor Day weekend. It's like September next weekend. To, September it's the 4th, next, next weekend. Next week. Tell me how, okay, in all honesty, he can recover and is going to get a championship match. And... Let the Chiefs say this. If he does get the championship match, it's going to be in Chicago. He's going to beat Moxley for the belt. I'm predicting it right now. I don't CM Punk I, actually didn't. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. But that's what's going to happen. CM Punk didn't actually hurt his foot. He hurt his mussy. <laughs> his man pussy. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Well, wow. well put. No beep on that one? How does he not get a beep for that one? For what? Pussy's a cat. That's right. Not in the intended version with which we it's were mussy. referring. It's, it's Mussy's all, not even a real word. It's all beep according me. to how you beep interpret me. it. Then it's an unreal beep. <laughs> Freaking hubcaps. Eddie Kingston got into an altercation with Sammy Guevara and has been suspended by AEW. Is that a work? Apparently not. That was going around. I guess he's been like... Kingston was saying he was going to beat the crap out of him like a couple of weeks ago. and Well, apparently, in all seriousness, Gravara kind of gave Eddie like a stink-eyed look at one point in the backstage over something. I guess he called him fat or something. Yeah, it was about the body stuff. Yeah, or something. yeah. so um, I think he was suspended, but we are. there was a match I just heard on our other show. Um, Dirt Tweet says, Very Nash comments and Jeff Jarrett leaving WWE SmackDown. Possible spoiler. Not sure what you mean by that. You guys that. are real legimicated on Twitter, I, I swear. I don't know what you mean by that because it was announced that Jarrett was leaving and has left and has been replaced by Road Dog, but I'm not sure where Nash comes in on that. Did I miss something? He needs a grown-up and spell check. <laughs> Next. For all your official tweets, I'm send them to at s- Matt Mullen. <laughs> at TCA702, I dare you. <laughs> I dare you. Here's another injury that uh, has affected <laughs> the plans for All Out. What's that? I'm reading my buddy Will's comment. Oh. I'd like to see Mox beat Punk in Chicago. Best in the world, my ass. Quote from Mox. Mox. There you go. Thank you. There's okay, no way that CM Punk can realistically win that. There's literally no way. Yeah. That would make sense. Thunder Rosa announces an injury, and there will be an interim champion again crowned it all out between yes. Tony Storm, Jamie Hayter, uh, Sheeta, and Baker. I am not a fan of this interim title shit. I, I am not. Well, uh, you know what I sent you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in every other promotion I've ever seen over 40 years of following wrestling, if you're injured and you're going to be out, you have to, if within 30 days, if you can't defend your title, we saw it happen with Finn Balor when he officially became the first universal champion the next night. He had to drop the belt and literally dr- put it down. Yeah. I don't like this interim stuff. Watch, watch what you say about 30 days. That's old school. Sh- I, I, I know. Old, I, and, and somebody's going to blow up on this side. I know. <laughs> yeah, okay, so watch. No, no, no. You know, I, I, hey, I, I'm just going to put it out there. You know, before, folks, you had 30 days to defend your title. If you couldn't defend the title in 30 days, then there was a tournament put up for the belt. And in my mind... Uh, I think WWE and I think AEW need to take a lesson. This interim shit's for the birds. And uh, uh, have a damn tournament. And because what it does may it, the best person win. I think what it does is it takes away, not the surprise, but you know at some point 
you're going to have to have a match that's going to put the belts back onto one person, just like we saw with the guys, right? And so even you know, then, like if I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, so you kind of know where that storyline is going to eventually progress, right? In most title match feuds, you have to build stuff and storyline. But the storyline's built right in when you have an interim champ. We knew CM Punk at some point had to face Moxley when, when all the interim stuff happened. Now we're going to see it again here. Even without an interim champion, it's still going to the same damn thing anyway. What do you mean? If you relinquish the title, you're coming back. You're automatically getting a title shot. Uh, well, who That's is? never not happened. So, so let me ask you a question. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I'm sure you, you probably know one, Chief Mike. Who is the last injured star who literally laid a belt down that upon their return, they got an immediate shot at getting their belt back. I mean, for injury. I'm not talking about like Charlotte losing and then going away or something. I'm talking about some. I mean, Finn Balor. When did he ever Finn get Finn Balor his? never got one. Well, there you go. So that's so who that's got one? That's one. No, no. So, I don't, so who, who I don't, got one after I think coming back? If I remember right, I think Randy Orton laid his belt down, and it was a year and a half later he finally got a title, title shot. You know? I think Batista immediately got a title shot. Immediately? Upon return? I mean, I, you know, Pretty I don't know. To it. I, I, that's why I'm asking. I I'm mean, not sure. I, I'm just putting that out there in yeah. terms of, so now, when Charlotte came back. Hey, Will, two, you got any idea, Will? Two storylines ago, when she just walked through the curtain, demanded a, a rematch or a match for the title, she got it, right? The triple threat, she got whatever it was. I'm talking about someone who was injured. Finn Balor almost waited two years before he was called back up to the main roster to even try to get the universal title away from Roman. I guess I think it was Roman. 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 <laughs> when? When he gave the belt up for leukemia, he. Okay. The first thing he went into was the. All right. He got he into. He took it. out. Uh, he took out Bray. Bray, and then got a title shot and won the belt, and he hasn't lost it since. Okay, so so there's one who so, came back from from an injury, but I think also before they realized he turned heel in a way that well, that's almost, when he was just gone. I don't think that was the leukemia part, but. No, I, wasn't he gone from the uh, Maybe it was the second time. Yeah. So, but he, he was viewed as a face upon his return, right? Crowd went nuts. Yeah. He took everybody out, and then all of a sudden, when, when he showed up in the back room with Heyman sitting next to him, that's when we realized the turn was there. Yeah. Of course, his white veneers were seen almost immediately that night. He took Bray Wyatt out, so those he knew something chicklets. was... <laughs> those white chicklets. All right. Hey, we're a few minutes hey, behind on our... Hold, hold on. Damn it. Thunder Rosa. Okay. I want to go back to this. Well, no, go to commercial. Never mind. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we come back, folks. Like Chief said, we're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the story of one man's incredible journey from 350 to 200 pound weight loss and his mission to help and inspire others. Aaron Phillips. People are praising Aaron's new book with five star reviews. Aaron's various humorous and wildly entertaining stories portray his rise as a sports announcer his encounters with exotic and irregular entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip through his long-running Vegas Unwrapped radio show and his contagious and positive style of pursuing success. Call now or visit our website or Amazon now to get your copy of Let My Voice Speak to You, stories from a Hall of Fame radio personality. Order now. What's up, man? It's your boy, Sam Fatu. I'm here with my man, Big G. I need you to check out the podcast, Thoughts Count Anyway. This is the essential character, EC3, on behalf of my dear friends and Thoughts Count Anyway. The podcast for your mind. When you need deep thinking about all things sports and entertainment. Hello, this is Martin Casals, a.k.a. Marty the Mob. And you're watching the Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Enjoy! <laughs> this is Impact Wrestling's Dash and Chris Bay, the ultimate finesse, former finesse division champion, and you're listening to Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Thoughts Count Anywhere. Y'all watching this. This is my new tag team partner, Steve O, aka Zoo, from the hit movie Friday, and from No Holds Bar. Hi, I'm Sean Tavari. Listen to Thoughts Count Anywhere for all your wrestling news. Hey, what's going on? This is Axe, and I'm smashing the demo link. And we want to invite you to watch every Saturday morning. Thoughts count. This is John Cena. I just, I just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast. Thoughts count anywhere, because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. 
I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count any of this? Is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere because they do. Me on, will you in there, may, please? May I have may I have one minute, please? Fan, I, fans, I love you all. I respect you all. If you if you want to put a tweet up or something like that and tell us to fuck off, at least have the decency to call in on the telephone and tell us that so that we can discuss it with you and find out why you're telling us to fuck off. Well, I don't want to take those calls live on the air because I'd have to hang up on them <laughs> if that, it gets too rowdy. That's okay. I'd rather see it up on Twitter if it's a direct response to something that we're talking about. Do not just put something up. Exactly. Hey, keyboard sake. warriors, at least tag me. Come how, on. Do they, how do they tag you? Tag TCA702. There you go. Matt will happily <laughs> respond on our behalf. I love messing with keyboard warriors. So Some use people that, are funny. Use at TCA702 for any crazy messages. All right, a couple of comments in here. William Hudson shares our thoughts. There are no rules anymore, unfortunately, with return bounce. Interim champions are garbage. He also goes on to say, and this will lead us right back into the discussion, Thunder Rosa has unfortunately brought the women's division down from how great it was going. AEW would be doing everyone a favor, taking the belt off of a Thunder, and for the record, he was a Thunder fan. Can't sandbag matches and try to make others look bad. It catches up to you. And Will says, keyboard warriors are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's talk about it. Hey, Thunder, anyway. Yes, let's start. Thunder Rosa announced this past week an injury in her back to the point where she claimed I'm busted open. She has no feeling in her legs. She, you know, so she, there's something going on in her back, possibly in her spine. Yes. And you know what? I give her credit if it's legit, and hopefully she's not bullshitting us. I think long term worrying about being able to walk for the next 60 years or seven years, however, whatever it is. I think is a much brighter look at something than saying, well, I could still go out there and risk injury. I don't. Just my opinion. I don't want to see anybody get injured. Right. Okay, period. If, if it's a true, legit injury, please take care of it, Thunder Rosa, and I applaud you for uh, giving the belt up. So, Tony Storm, Jamie Hayter, Hikuro Shida, and Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. So, let's talk about it. Go, Matt. Start you off first, if you'd like. Mm. Personally, I don't want to see like anything like bad happen to Thunder Rosa, like personally being injured. But in the ring, thank you, Brandy. Such a freaking horrible champion. I can't stand it. Who's that? Who Thunder? Thunder Rosa. Okay. She's awful. I want the belt to go back to who brought the ratings and was the most entertaining person in the women's division. That's Doctor Britt Baker. Because D she was the only. M D. She was the only one there at the time. Okay, that was it. Those others. Pers well, personally, I want to see. I want to see him put it on Tony Storm. Well, I was going to say, I I, okay. I know what you're saying from a rating standpoint to put it on on Baker, but is this a time now where AEW can start taking another talent like a Tony Storm, put the belt on her, and grow her? Yeah. Is AEW, Well, let me ask you this: Has AEW been around long enough to where they know how to take someone like Tony Storm <laughs> and build her up to be a champion like Baker? I mean, I would say no because they had a chance with Thunder Rosa and Akira Shida. Well, I, I I disagree with you. I think if they can build people like MJF and uh, uh, you know Tay Conti and people like that, then they can they can build Tony Storm up. Now they, there should be enough great minds in the back. Yeah, right. R William Regal, Mark Henry, Chris Jericho, from the ring perspective to help do that. Wouldn't you think? Don't they have a female there with 20-some years experience, too? Who's the most that? boring wrestler on planet Earth, yes. Uh, she's, she's damn good. She's good in the ring, but oh my God, she has a personality of a paper bag. We're not talking about personality. We talk about That's how you make a wrestler we're, we're their talk, personality. We're talking about wrestling, not personality. And I, I said... You're going to be the greatest wrestler <coughs> on planet Earth. If you can't get on I the mic, nobody cares. I said... They have a they have a woman in the back. 
DPW propaganda train. bot on Twitter at Babyface Mix says, can only imagine how people would react if Thunder Rosa was a women's champion in WWE and these reports came out about her back injury, I presume? I would be saying the same. What's the difference between this? I would be saying the same thing. Twitter, uh, I swear. Sir, uh, if, she was, if she was injured in WWE. It'd be a whole different thing if she was on the USA Network and, and not TBS. And it's, <laughs> and it's a legit injury. I would wish her all, all the best and hurry. Get yourself healthy and fixed. So yep. I don't have a problem if it's AEW or WWE or ROH or New Japan I guess. or, t- or uh, whatever, whatever company, okay, whatever, FSW. For you fans that don't know, FSW's out here in Las Vegas. If she was here in Las Vegas and got hurt, I'd be wishing her to get well and applaud her for giving her championship up. Matt? I can just see if she was in WWE be like, well, hey, WWE is way better, so if she was injured, it would only be her left leg, not her right leg. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Brandy. Brandy says, morning, guys. Matt and Chief, thanks again for joining me for her birthday. Chief, thanks again for that special call. She's still blown away. Aaron, I hope your wife is recovering smoothly. Uh, yes, Brandy, slowly but surely she is. Thank you for asking. Uh, Ronald says he saw where there she is going. The plan is for her to lose the belt at all out. Um, and then, actually, Brandy put something in there that's, that's quite one. interesting. That's a good one. Wish too. they would do more with Chris Statlander, but she's injured right now. Isn't she's she? injured she's for, out. like, months. Yeah, she did her knee she's or like something, right? her knee, yeah. Yeah, so she's going to be out for a while. But here's another opportunity that, let's say, when she comes back healthy, and let's say for the same discussion, Tony Storm wins the belt here, and here's two fresh faces yes. that can potentially do something down the line. This situation with Tony Storm, I put her over more now if she has to beat three wrestlers instead of just Thunder yeah. Rosa. That's what, a good point. What about Tay Connie, too? You know? Yeah. There's another one. She does wrestle, but she's like Sammy's side piece, pretty much. Well, yeah. If they give her the opportunity to, like, exactly. become a... Like, it, same thing with, like, Anna Jay. She's a good wrestler, and they, she you. doesn't really get the... Thank you. And this is the problem when you have too much talent. And they and have, they're still signing people. No, right. And well, again, a- absolutely. They're still signing people, as is Triple H. So yeah. I think we're going to see the influx of too much talent. And I think somewhere down the line, we're going to see the same st- conversations again. How come we're not seeing? We just had it right here. How come they're not doing this with this person? When you have too much talent and you don't have enough airtime, that's what's going to happen. And we're, ta- we're talking about these women right here mm-hmm. in AEW. There's one person we haven't, e- one lady, one woman that we haven't even talked about that I think right now is carrying the women's division. That's Jade Cargo. True. I can't wait for Athena versus Jade Cargo. It's like one of the matches I'm looking forward to it all out. Yes. That's how I look at it. And it's crazy that she's this good already and she's only been in wrestling in general like a year and a half. Yeah. All right, Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho has been made official for All Out. Did anybody catch Brian almost calling himself Daniel Bryan? I missed that. That was funny. So what was it? I legitimately started laughing. Were they face to face in a promo or how? To talk they about were it? like face to face in the <laughs> ring, and he said some of being like a real professional wrestler. He goes, "You'll never beat me, Daniel Br- to Brian oh. Danielson." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. "You almost caught yourself." Gotcha. Randy says also uh, <laughs> as far as. Uh, um, Tay Conti, she goes, she has to remove her tongue from Sammy's mouth long enough to be thought of. <laughs> and then here's a, you know what? Okay, Brandy, Brandy just mentions one that, that we didn't even bring up. Where's Ruby Soho? Squashed. Why? So there's, a, there's another talent that ask was to, Ask Tony Conway. Right, right. So here's a, here's a talent that was lauded when she signed. Yep. WWE was upset when, when they cut her. You know, the fans. That's another great lot, name of someone who just isn't there ever since double or nothing they really haven't done much with her yeah you know i would so far in terms of those former wwe uh, talents who are now at AEW, ruby miro where's he been he uh, got introduced in the worst possible way as the best man that was thing horrible. i mean are you kidding me where's, now where's naya Jax? well she's retired she's or, fired and nobody cares she's, she's not wrestling who are you referring dear to dear god no she better never come back to wrestling i'm just saying I'm just saying. She got no, s- no idea who that she, is. She got You're squashed. Gonna... She got squashed. 
Who? She squashes people. You see how big that bitch Not is? <laughs> the whole, <laughs> you see the whole thing? See the whole, whole she, thing? She got squashed and went home. Okay. Bye. And, well, I think you're going to see a Who lot. Who squashed her? I think you got, Vince did. Oh, that's, okay. That's your turn. Well, but she also put a had, hole in her game. She was on time. All right. But she, on, was, she was on time off from wrestling, though. She'd I, take and I, 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 t- I right. totally and she, get it. And she wanted to extend because of what she felt was that her mind was not in the right place to come back. And she was dis- declined. And that is what the story supposedly is. We don't know. Nope. We don't know. And, and, and that's why I'm saying she got squashed. <laughs> okay. Ruby's but, getting squashed. But Ruby's an active wrestler, though, right now. Miro's why? getting squashed. But why, though? That's what I want to know. Because there's not enough time on TV for all these wrestlers to be seen. Okay, so I, that I agree. I agree with that, and okay. I brought this up. To fix it, oh. what they're doing Thank you, Ronald. is they're putting some of them on the other two shows. Well, Ronald just clarified <coughs> that. Yes, so Soho was on uh, Rampage last night in a mixed tag. You gotta watch Thank Dark you. and Evolution. She's usually on there. All the people you don't see are always on the YouTube shows. But they're not getting the hype being on the regular TV. You know, TBS or it is, it is like the ratings. But honestly, I think more people watch Evolution on YouTube. <laughs> Then people watch Dynamite. I just want to remind everybody, you are watching Thoughts Count Anywhere right here on the Go Live Vegas studios. We're talking about all that there is about wrestling. That's Matt. That's Chief. I'm Aaron. Everybody on the Go Live Vegas mobile app, we thank you. If you don't have it, download it so that if you need to go somewhere, you can continue listening to all the shows here on the network. And if there's no show, guess what? You get all the great 80s music 24-7 and commercials and everything. I pop when I hear Hogan's commercial when, he, when it comes up on the studio. Anyway, um, but it's, it, this is the problem. Great wrestlers out there, not enough time. But how much more time do you put on TV that you get tired, tired of wrestling? Dilute, you know, it gets diluted a little bit sometimes. But it's a, it's a fine line when you have all this talent. All right, let's move on. Tony Khan held a backstage meeting with talent before Dynamite about talent relations and development. Also discussed from AEW Legal was WWE contract tampering saying a couple of talents have been contacting Chris Jericho's name came out. I think this past week is one that was allegedly tampered with during Oh, he stuff. was the one that was calling out WWE saying that like multiple people have been contacted. But then he came out saying he was one of them. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Did see that. So. I can see like Malachi Black, Adam Cole, Miro. All of like Triple H's favorite people will be like, yeah. hey, how long how long's the contract up? <laughs> Little how long did you sign with that freaking place for? Right. Little wink wink. Chief? What's wrong with that? With what? Contract so, so, they, so they called him up and asked him, how long's your contract? That's not contract tampering. Well, in the eyes of legal it is. No Fuck. other profession you, can you do that. If you're signed to a contract, no one can talk to somebody else that's under contract. Fuck legal. I'm surprised Triple H just hasn't called like Tony Khan. How like, how much to buy a couple of these people out? How about that? What's that? What Matt said? No, fuck legal. Well, every every contracted sports athlete in all the sports, when you're signed to a contract, <coughs> no other they can't be spoken to while under contract about coming to another team. If they're a free agent, that's a different story. No, wait, wait. But that's hold, what they're referring it, here. Hold it. Mm-hmm. We're friends. I call you up at your house, mm-hmm. and we're chit-chatting mm-hmm. about general. Mm-hmm. And I say to you, Aaron. Oh, Liz is in the chat room, so. And I say, Aaron, <laughs> how long's your contract? Mm-hmm. And you tell me. And we go on, and we talk, we talk for another hour. That's not contract tampering. And that, that I would agree with from this standpoint. So then how, wait, wait. So then how do we know that that's not What's happening? We're, t- we're hearing Tony Khan or the, his legal department say, oh, well, they're tampering. They're calling people up. They're tampering. They're wanting to this, that, and the other. Oh, they're offering the money. Or Get the hell out of here. You can't call somebody up as a friend and talk to them, and you might drop that question to them. Bullshit. I- so why would a guy like Chris Jericho, who's a goat, right, why would he be the one in, to come in out? In your and, opinion. Well, no, no. I, in your opinion. Okay, in my opinion, which okay. is fine, which is what all this show is based upon is our thoughts and opinions. Your opinion. Why is it then that he came out stating multiple wrestlers were contacted, which, which means some people or some bodies had to have gone to him, or um, Tech Bro on Twitter says, thank you, Chief, nom nom press. 
Okay, if you, in the scenario you painted, if you and I are just having a casual conversation in our homes with nobody's ears around, I'm not going to be the one to say, oh, Tony, chief from WWE called me. You know, in a private conversation like that, I agree a million percent because now we're talking as friends. Exactly. Okay? But we don't know when and where these conversations may have happened. We don't know if it's a younger talent from AEW, and I don't, I'm not going to throw any names out there, but nope. a younger talent who was maybe under contract at one time, maybe they want to protect themselves with AEW and say, you know what, I better be, stay good with Tony Khan and company. I better tell these people what's happening. I don't think a guy like, and I'm going to use his name, Chris Jericho, as an example, I don't think he would be the one to go running, but apparently people went to him or somehow went to the office and, hey, there was a slew of AEW wrestlers. I mean, AEW wrestlers were contacted by WWE. I don't know, but in those legal terms, when it comes out like this, okay, it appears to be contract tampering, not in the scenario with which you and I, which you laid out there, and you and I just having a casual conversation. All right. I don't think if they were, like, real friends, he wouldn't call Dave Meltzer two seconds later to be like, hey, guess who talked to me about my contract? <laughs> exactly. Now, but one other thing they did discuss was morale. And the lack of alleged communication between performers and Tony Khan. We saw that come up with... Maybe CM Punk needs to keep his mouth shut. W we saw that with Jonathan Grisham saying the same thing. There were other wrestlers who came out and talked about lack of communication. And that was something that he addressed as well um, in this open conversation. Yeah. Tony Khan was smart to build like a talent relations thing. Because uh, what company actually has like a good... like? communication thing with a CEO of the company. Right. Nobody does. Not many. You know, I'm going to digress for a minute. Okay. If, if I may. Um, I look at and I think back to when AEW started. And we saw the big picture. It was Tony Khan. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It was the Young Bucks, mm -hmm. right? It was the gentleman that had just come back from injury. Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega. Right. And Cody Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Okay. To me, Cody has now gone to WWE. But to me, Kenny's still there. The Bucks are still there. And... If Tony Khan doesn't want to deal with it, then in my mind, the Bucks and uh, Kenny have been around the wrestling business long enough. They need to step up and take control of the locker room mm -hmm. and get it in order. And if you have, and if they have problems with other wrestlers and they can't work out what needs to be worked out behind the scenes, in my mind, that's when you go to Tony Khan and you handle it but you don't air your dirty laundry out in public. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, we're going to get to birthdays here in a few moments. Jay, uh, Bobby Fish says that Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly will be back to 100% very soon. Yes. Jade Cargill will defend the TBS Championship versus Athena at All Out. Uh, let's see. All right. Back to MJF. Goat Brian Pillman called you smart marks. Thank you very much. He's back. Nobody is talking about... The fact that MJF is being frozen out because Tony Khan doesn't want him in the WWE. He saw what happened with Cody, but if AEW original, who's not an ex-WWE guy, can go to WWE and make some splash, it would be a domino effect and the end of AEW. We've been trying to figure out this whole thing with MJF as a worker, not quite frankly. True that. Everybody is. I still think he's coming at, like all out. Okay. I, you know, un unfortunately... Um, I, I've always said, and I just said it a minute ago, some things need to stay backstage, okay, until it happens. We don't know if MJF really wants to go to WWE, okay? He said it. Well, he's on the contract to 2024. He can't do anything until his contract it, it, runs out or he's bought out. Exactly. So, you know, come on. I, I agree with Matt. I think we're going to see him sooner than later. I want to see like some weird ending to the main event of like some kind of injury and then MJF comes in, wins the belt and be like, 
Uncle Tony said I can have a title shot whenever I want if I came back, and he just walks out with a title in Chicago. You know what? Ronald just brought up a great point. Also in the locker room, to your point, Dustin Rhodes. Yeah. Totally. As a leader. Totally. Yep. That's you, a great point. You know. To All right. Go ahead. Are we done with that? What? 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 No. Go ahead. I, I got something to say. But well, go ahead. No, no. So say it. I, I you know, I just wonder from Dusty. No, no. I just think. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what a great storyline would be with MJF. Okay. Okay. Somehow, MJF figures a legal loophole out, okay, and is able to take over AEW from Tony Khan and run the freaking show. Storyline-wise or reality? Mm -hmm. No, storyline. Oh, okay. That would, be, that would sell tickets. That would put fans in the seats, and that would be good for business. Uh, Brian Wayne out on Twitter at Mr. Happy BW says AEW has a few fights the world is ending. WWF or WWE kept the Harris boys around to basically beat people up when needed. WCW same and also had Regal, Slater, among others, and let's not forget Mang who is around. Heck, even Orndorff. Speaking of Slater, Sting knows it happens. Okay, that's a fair point. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate it. That, Brian, Tony, that Tony, was outstanding. Tony Storm was supposed to be in this match, but yesterday or the day before, she underwent successful jaw surgery, and she yeah. said we'll see everybody on Wednesday. Yes, she did. Uh, was it jaw surgery or just dental work? I thought I saw it like it was dental work. DMD did it. <laughs> wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. All right, a couple of notes from the indie world. Let's she, talk about this. She did do the surgery. I wouldn't imagine. Britt did, yeah. Seriously. I'm not sure what the FC means. Fat Man Josh at Twitter says AWFC. What does FC mean? Anybody? I have, no I have no idea. Okay. Indie Report. Let's first talk about the fact Impact is returning to Las Vegas, October 21 and 22. I, yeah, that's the picture I saw. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Impact will be back here in Vegas uh, the week before Halloween, uh, October 21 and 22. So you can check that out. By the way, one of the messages I saw fly up on Twitter is that somebody who purchased tickets for WrestleMania just got his WrestleMania tickets sent to him via email. Yeah. So, um, all right, so that's that. So Mickey James now has been talking and tweeting and will be coming out on Impact, I guess this week, uh, that she has an announcement to make about her future. She's going to retire. Think so? No. Nah. I hope not, but I think that's what it's going to be. Okay, so if she retires, let me ask you this. What does she do after retirement? Stay with Impact, work behind the scenes, or go to NWA with Nick? Whatever she wants to do. Or, go, or continue singing, because she does have a successful country singing uh, is, career. Is, you know, she'd be a hell of a trainer. Okay. I'm wondering if you go back to the Performance Center, if anyway. As a, as a trainer? Yes. Uh, okay. That's a good possibility. Yeah. All right. If you're going to be a trainer, why would you go train the people that already know what they're doing, pretty much? If you want to be a real trainer, you go train the college athletes that want to prove themselves so one of them stands up and be like, hey, I did that. Right. Yes. Those who signed the NIL Agreed. agreements, right? I'm like, you can only tell Deanna Perrazzo to do so many things. She's probably one of the best women wrestlers out there. Absolutely. All right. And last but not least, some sad news came across our desk. Longtime wrestling fan and promoter? Hey, his promoter in NWA. Howard Brody passed away this past week after uh, succumbing to some illness, I, I, I believe, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. Howard Brody passed away. It's a gentleman we interviewed uh, on this show a yeah. year back or a year or two ago with Scott and everything. Talk about the start of WrestleConnects that they yeah. put together to help uh, wrestlers. So our thoughts and prayers Howard. to the family and friends of Howard. Great guy. So uh, we, that's, that's going to leave a big hole in the indie scene uh, as well. All right. Uh, got that guy. Okay. You know what it's time for? Happy birthday to you. Time for some birthdays. Happy birthday to you. If you are celebrating your birthday happy today. Birthday, happy huh? birthday. Pay attention. Happy Only had one job. Happy birthday to you. If you are celebrating your birthday today, August 27th through next Friday, Labor Day weekend, September the 2nd, you are celebrating a birthday with these peoples. Today, August 27th, as noted earlier by one of our great Twitter followers, the great Kali celebrates today, Sergeant Slaughter today, and Jazz. I, with Sergeant Slaughter, all I think about is DX coming out with the masks that had the windshield wipers on it during, oh, yeah. during that time. August 28th, tomorrow, Toxin, Ricky Reyes, and Shaniqua. Is that Reyes or Reyes? Reyes. Reyes. R-E-Y-E-S. Well, sometimes it's pronounced Reyes. So Reyes. I should ask that before we run on. Shaniqua. 
August 29th, Stan Hansen. Oh, that dark mustache, the whole thing he always wore. And that, ooh, you know, he's a great wrestler. Isn't he from the, isn't JBL from that lineage? See, I know, I know these things. Locally, but a gentleman who's known internationally, Kazarni is how he wrestled at the WWE, but now we know him simply as Sin Bodhi. Our man, Mr. Sin. August 30th, happy birthday to Scott Stanford and Caleb Conley. I do not recognize those names. August 31st, Jeff Hardy, the Enigma, Mickey James, the aforementioned Mickey, Ember Moon, also now known as Athena, and Raul Mendoza, September 1st. Oh, this guy. Bam, bam, Bigelow. Also from Jersey, wasn't he? Atlantic City. There you go. That, he had the, the one with the fire and the flames, and, and his head was shaved with the, oh my, not shaved, but it was tattooed too. Deuce, Doug Williams. Are we talking about the former NFL quarterback there? No. Who is Doug Williams? Impact Wrestling. You can talk in the microphone. It's not going to bite you. Impact Wrestling. Okay. Cana- Canadian. Oh, okay. So our producer should have known him, right? He's not even listening. He's playing uh, solitaire. Anybody outside of Bret Hart and the British Bulldog he has no idea. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Rocco Rock, the Tonga Kid, Sim Snuka, and Sammy Callahan. And on September 2nd, Todd Champion, Tracy Smothers. Everybody, happy birthday for all of you there. Celebrating with those folks. Please be safe this past week. And, of course, next week is Labor Day. So, please, extra day here for those who celebrate. Enjoy. We want to see you back on the air watching and following us uh, next Saturday. Okay, by the way, happy birthday was done by uh, Pocket Aces, so we thank them for that. All right, let's talk about next week real quickly before we get into co- uh, into pop culture. Next week at this time... Hubcaps. <laughs> Clash at the Castle will be going on as we speak. Pre-show, 9 a.m. Pacific. Main card starts at 10 a.m. So I, I'm going to put it... We kind of talked about it a little bit last week that maybe the first hour of the show... We would talk AEW because that weekend the all-out program is, what, Monday, I think. And then, of course, we could then switch to a little bit of our own preview and prediction show uh, of uh, Clash. And then we thought for something different for that second hour, because our producer here has a TV screen that can get us into the network, courtesy of my logon. Don't tell no one. No, well, (laughs) well, we could sell tickets. People can come in, watch the show, watch the Clash with us, and we can make some money. Uh, Kevin at Avalanche Style on Twitter says, I get why someone would ask that question, though. Mox and Jericho are both higher on the card in AEW than they were at the end of their WWE runs, but they don't have more eyes on them in AEW. Okay? I don't disagree with that. I mean, certainly Mox at the end, you know, with the uh, you people stink, and he comes out with the gas mask and all of that. But Punk pretty much left. He left. There was no way that he was buried at the end. He left as a champion. He beat Cena. And he ran through the crowd, right? Now, the pipe bomb, though, that's really what kind of put the end to it. Okay, anyway. So we thought the second hour, since we can continue to watch The Clash, we'd kind of do what they call a reaction show. Yeah. That we could watch the show, talk about what we're seeing. Maybe in between matches, we can give our opinions and thoughts. Now, if people out there are going to be taping somehow uh, Clash, which I don't know if you can do that on on the Peacock. No, you can just watch the replay. You can watch the replay. So you may see some spoilers or hear some spoilers. So that's why we're going to give you the heads up right now. (laughs) We haven't officially decided, but I think that's the way we're going to go next week. Is that right? Are we we going to have popcorn and potato chips and stuff? Oh, I know we'll have at least donuts next week. Or what? I mean, we can bring in snacks. I don't want to dirty the studio, though. We have to ask for permission. We're not. Well, you know, chips and... Huh? All right, I'm sure we, he's, our producer says that Mrs. Producer says... I like, can have the leftovers. <laughs> well, you know, the chips all <laughs> over, you know, but, but we can bring in little snicks. So, I mean, is that something you guys want to do next week and hey, kind of talk about Hey, it? boss lady, yeah. if you're still in the uh, chat room here, uh, when you go to store, <laughs> can you pick up some uh, popcorn and potato chips, please? I would greatly appreciate it. He's putting in a special Thank you. order. We're talking Liz, by the way, his wife. I don't know. She didn't say goodbye, so she must still be in the chat room. I don't know. Brandy, is mom still in the chat room? Do you know? Anyway, so I think that's what we're going to do, unless we decide something else during the week, right? Sounds good to me. So I know I have a friend who's interested. We usually watch uh, the pay-per-views or premium live events. Oh, we're going to bring, uh, what's his name? Uh, what, the guy. Good old what's-his-face? What's his shirt that you're going to make? The dirt something or other? Too dirt or something. Liz is still in the what's, chat. What's, yeah. a, what's that show? 
What are you talking about? Thomas. What, what, you name, Thomas Burnett? Yeah, what's the shirt? Oh, Dirty, Dirty Thomas. Yeah, Dirty Thomas. We're going to bring him in next week because it's a prediction show. And then I have a buddy of mine who watches wrestling with me. He's a big wrestling fan. We usually hang out at my place. So I invited him to just come hang out in the studio. So, yeah. uh, yes, by the way, Liz is still in there. So you got, you got about seven more minutes to keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. Let's hey, go. So, Mom, did you hear me? I, I, I need uh, popcorn and uh, uh, potato chips, maybe some peanuts, too. Yeah, that'd be nice. Some napkins. We'll do it right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Is she going to come in and feed it to you, too? No. Okay. <laughs> I can't eat. I'll have to take my teeth out. Oh, my gosh. Fans, uh, you, so you're going to... Can you not eat with your choppers? No. In? You have to... So you're, you gum it. You're going to try to gum peanuts? Oh, hell yeah. Well, you're going to swallow... They're small. You're going to swallow them whole. Calling on the phones said. because the chief said so. Right. Oh, by the way, I hope Thomas has been working on his pantomime because he did a terrible job last week. Did he? We had him. We had. Oh, we dear had that. God, that was horrible. <laughs> he couldn't fill in for me. Huh? It was worse than watching Godzilla in Japan. He only had. How, call in now because the chief said so. You gotta have he to, screwed up eight you, words. You gotta have to knock. Well, but you call know, in because the chief said so. But he so. Fo- mm-hmm. right. But he follows the show enough, and he's I here know. enough that he should know the eight words. It's like bringing a notebook to take. That notes. And he was like minorly whispering it. Right. And it somehow was still like nine words off of an eight word thing, um, but whatever. <laughs> what can I say? So, Thomas, we know you're working today, but dude, for next week, yeah. oh, you better straighten hey, that uh, out. And I did, uh, just so you guys know, I did, get a, I did get a message from my brother, Mr. Sean Hyde, and he does apologize for not being here in the uh, chat room with us because... He is now working day shift. That's okay. That's oh, nice. So, good for him, but that's yeah. why we video records on our Facebook page, it's on our YouTube he, page. He watches. Good. Good, good. Well, we appreciate Sean sticking with us. Oh, yeah. By the way, I thank nice. you. Almost 2,000 right. people listening on the app right now. Thank you so much. We love you, and we appreciate that. Call in because the chief said so, damn it. So, actually, I would love to know where just somebody is listening to us on the app. But if they're listening to us on the app, they're probably driving somewhere, and so that's pretty not safe. No, he he could not fill in your shoes. So, (laughs) Um, but (laughs) damn right. Let's go into pop culture now. Let's go. You, I see what, huh? Oh, Brandy says she's sorry she wasn't available last week instead of Thomas. Well, that was sort of like last minute because you know Chief could not make it last week, so sort of last minute, Brandy. No, I had the diarrhea with the fluid drive. Hey. Of all the things to beat. I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, he, he's, he's, I don't know what the hell the producer's doing. He's, he's over there. So, oh, he's probably th- looking think, up a picture. I think he's got food or something, <laughs> and he's freaking hiding it from no, us. No, I think he's, wait, he's finding something. I'm, a pic, just wait a few seconds. I'm sure a picture's about to pop Who up. Who the hell knows? College Week Zero. Another great talk hey. about marketing thing within the NCAA. This week is Week Zero. UNLV plays tonight. Well, they're part of week zero. I'm just letting you yeah, know. Yeah, that's all right. Who are they playing? I, Who are they playing? Is it UTEP? <laughs> UTEP? I, I, I Texas, forget. El Paso? They're, they would be coming up to play them? I forget. And they're playing at Allegiant now, so. Yes, they are. That should be a nice. Yes. Uh, yes. You ever nice wanted a cheap way to go see Allegiant Stadium? I think what, that's to go the to UNLV? Way to go. I wonder what they're selling tickets for. I wonder what their, their ticket prices are. Uh, but anyway. I'm so an did, alumni, so I wonder what I could get them for. Yeah. Hmm. Without hmm. AARP, you should get a discount as an alumni. Well, let's see. AARP, military discount. They'll pay you to take the tickets. S- senior citizen <laughs> discount. Triple A? Do you have Triple A too? No. Costco? Yeah. No, see, they make no, you Sam's. 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 All yeah. right. Remember when it was Sam Boyd? You could just go to like the student union and just give tickets. Yeah, to absolutely. All right. So week zero for college football is kicking off this weekend. Right. Um, so week zero. I, I got to tell you, that's a pretty smart marketing idea for the NCAA calling this week with a few handful of games before the quote-unquote regular right. season starts, calling it week zero. Right. Uh, this, they started this a couple of years ago. And then along with that, man, NFL preseason's wrapping up this weekend, which means next weekend, next week, I think Labor Day? I don't yeah. know what the start is. Yeah. Uh, the NFL regular season will get underway. Everybody's bold predictions will probably be wrong by the end of the football season. Raiders finished 4-0. They beat the Patriots last night. What did they win for that in preseason? Nothing. But I'm gonna tell you what, I don't. The hell is that? Just means their fish string's really good. 
<laughs> Deuce <laughs> scared himself on the sound effect. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I have to say, though, I'm not a major fan of the Raiders, and I'll probably get booed for that. UNLV versus Idaho State. Idaho. Thank you, Ronald. Thanks, Ron. Uh, you I know, love our crack research and, staff and around I'll the And I'll probably uh, um, get booed a lot, but you know what? The Raiders actually looked good. Oh, I think they have a they, great shot to, they, to do some they, stuff this year. Uh, I'm very, very. I've watched a couple of the games, and I've been very impressed with the way they are performing this year, mm -hmm. and not seeing the main starters at all during preseason. I'm really wondering how good the Raiders can be this year. Well, we're going to find out for sure, and I think they have a chance. I mean, you look at some of the additions. Uh, that they have, although I believe their left tackle, uh, their number one pick left tackle from last year, he hurt himself, he, yeah. a knee issue. He's out about six weeks. Yeah, so, week. and of course, that left tackle side is what is traditionally called as the blind side yeah, but I'm gonna tell you for what, a right-handed quarterback. I'm going to tell you what, the left tackle last night, man, yep. he took him out, ran a sweep right into the end zone. Two other things, Las Vegas Aces play Sunday against the... Uh, uh, Sue Young, Sue Bird's team here in Las Vegas. And the other thing is single season tickets, single tickets are on sale for the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, uh, the Aces, they're in the semifinals for the WNBA, so good luck to them. I'll actually, I was going to talk about that on Aaron's Hour, too. Well, so you I'm glad, no, I'm glad I you pre, I pre I preempted You're, it for you. No, that's good. I appreciate that. All right, I great. Guess I did. I don't know. Great okay. show. That's okay. You know how many times we talk about stuff here? I talk about on Aaron's what, Hour. What Come do on. I know? All right, great show today, everybody. <laughs> want to thank everybody for watching or listening on the app, on YouTube, wherever you have got us. Please continue. If you're on YouTube, hit the red button, subscribe, and please reshare that. Get your friends to like it. Chiefs warming up now that the show's over. Better late than never. Everybody on the Go Live Vegas mobile app, and if you normally listen to us on Facebook or YouTube, you should download the Go Live Vegas mobile app just in case regardless lastly hey if you want to jump on the bandwagon and help market and promote this show email us at info at we'd love for your support we can get oh how many viewers are we getting now per week that's 30 40, all right about 30 40, 000. of course our show now is up on a new network which i'll announce next week with our good friend david zucker so we've got international coverage as well and uh yeah. we'll just take it from there final thoughts there mr matt Everybody have a good, safe week. It's going to get hot again. Stay hydrated. Don't do a Ric Flair drinks the Gatorade. <laughs> Chief. Hey, coming up on Labor Day weekend, next weekend, please be safe on the roads. And if you go into a school zone, slow your ass down because the police were out Wednesday when I was coming home, the motorcycle police. Yep. And I... I'm doing 15 miles an hour, and there's people zooming by me. Oh, yeah? And I'm just... They can make quotas, for sure. All right, so be careful out there. All right, I'm Aaron Phillips. Thank you for watching. Just a quick reminder, rejoin me back here in one hour on Aaron's Hour. My special guest will be Cleveland DeWolf. He owns a place up in Boulder City at the Boulder Hotel called the Cleveland's Lounge. We're going to hear from his story about how a construction worker went to owning a lounge. Thank you for watching. Be kind to everybody. Why is that? We're all we have. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week right here at TCA. Peace. We're out.